Good evening. It gives me a great deal of pleasure as the very proud principal of Sati Jean High School to welcome friends, relatives, parents, and especially the esteemed class of 1986 to this prestigious ceremony this evening. Will you join me in welcoming the class? introduce some guests that we have, uh, some of whom you will hear from later this evening, but who are also seated on the stage this evening, and uh, they will stand when I call their names so that you make sure that I introduce them properly. I'd like to, uh, to uh, just call them out by name here. Uh, Ken Kesey, would you stand please? <laughs> Mr. Mike. Williams, the past board of directors for School District 4J. Mr. Paul Harrison, current board member of School District 4J. Dr. Robert Stolley, director of curriculum, School District 4J. And Don DeWitt, English Department Chair, South Eugene High School. We talk a lot at South Eugene about pride, and we talk a lot about excellence. And I'd like to make sure that tonight's graduating class has a clear focus on the fact that we're not talking about being better than someone else. We're talking about being the best individual that we can be for the skills that God has provided us and for the abilities that we take away from school after the process of education. This evening, I'd like to start out our festivities by talking about winners and losers. And everyone in this class can begin this evening. Everyone in this room can begin this evening to be termed a winner. Winners and losers. When winners make mistakes, they say, I was wrong. When losers make mistakes, they say, it wasn't my fault. Winners work harder than losers and have more time. Losers are always too busy to do what is necessary. Winners go through a problem. Losers go around it and never get past it. Winners make commitments. Losers make promises. Winners say, I'm good, but not as good as I ought to be. Losers say, I'm not as bad as a lot of other people. Winners listen. Losers just wait until their turn to talk. Winners respect those who are superior to them and try to learn something from them. Losers resent those who are superior to them and try and find chinks in their armor. Winners feel responsible for more than their job. Losers say, I only work here. Winners say, there ought to be a better way to do it. And losers say, that's the way it's always been done here. On the stage this evening, you see a platform full of winners. The first musical number that we'll have the ple pleasure of being listeners to is Yezu jo Joy of Man's Desiring. And Brian Baker and Sarah Hall will be here in the piano to play a duet for us. Come forward, please.
in keeping with the long-standing tradition, we'd now like, like to have some comments. comments from one of the student addresses, the best years may be the toughest, Julie Dechter, who is Communications Commissioner. Julie. People tell us that the high school years are the best years of our lives, but for many, they have been some of the most difficult. It was often a struggle, not only academically, but socially as well. It was a time of uncertainty and confusion, searching for a place within the school's social structure. It was also a time of searching for our own identities. Not only were we exploring different kinds of people and ideas, but exploring different aspects of our own personalities as well. Establishing yourself in high school may have been quite easy or extremely difficult, depending on the individual. But for all of us, there was some amount of stress and trauma involved. For no matter how secure we felt within our group of friends, we were going through a transition and learning how to deal with people on a more mature level. D.H. Lawrence wrote, each time we strive to a new relation with anyone or anything, it is bound to hurt somewhat because it means the displacing of old connections and this is never pleasant. During these tough and often unpleasant times, we may have asked ourselves, what is the purpose of all this suffering? But despite the misery that went along with high school, it was all a necessary part of becoming an adult and a member of society. High school was just the beginning of having to deal with people on an adult level. All through life, we will have to find and refind our place within our environment, whether it be at college, at work, or in our social lives. High school prepares us for these experiences. We will always encounter people with conflicting personalities and ideas to our own. But in high school, we have learned how to seek out those who appeal to us and compromise with those that don't. Through our high school relationships and experiences, we have prepared ourselves for going out in the real world and finding a niche where we feel secure and comfortable. So all the pain that went along with our high school years has not been in vain. We have all gained something from our various trials and tribulations. We hope we have learned from our mistakes and gained confidence from our successes. We are better prepared to deal with society, the positive as well as the negative aspects of relationships. So when we look back at our high school years and smile at the good times and wince at the bad, let us remember this time has helped us to develop our characters and has made us into the people we are and will be. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. We have a musical number for us now and for you. And it's How I Feel from the musical The Me Nobody Knows, Alicia Robinson, soloist and Glenn Fleischman, pianist. Tell you 
Thank you. Thank both of you. And in fact, uh, Glenn, who, who most of you can read and interpret, is the president of this very fine graduating class of 1986. And uh, Glenn would now like to share with us the topic, Bright College Days. Unaccustomed as I am to public speaking, I decided to turn to Webster's Dictionary for inspiration. I looked up the word graduation and I found that it comes from the Latin word gratis, meaning a step. And imagine boiling down everything that's occurred during the last 13 years into that one word, gratis, a step. A mighty big step, I would say. And we mass this final time to exercise our commencement forth into life. This step we're about to take reminds me of the words which songwriter Tom Lehrer stole for his song, Bright College Days, will pass and be forgotten with the rest. The point being, to extend the metaphor, how many of us have made a footprint, a lasting impression during the last three years? As the last class to have entered as sophomores, we have much more competition and less time to make our mark, but regardless, how will we be remembered? South builds off of its past. After three years, we've all learned that. It thrives in diversity. Consider this, we have outstanding programs in every conceivable area. The worst insult you can bring to bear is not to call a particular department or program bad, but to call it mediocre. Mediocrity, we have very little of that. We're not perfect, we don't intend to be perfect, and we certainly don't apologize for not being perfect. We've been urged to strive for excellence, and we did. Look at the class of 86. We're comprised of football players, poets, chemists, gymnasts, physicists, singers and tennis players, athletes, scientists, mathematicians, historians, business people, linguists, performers and artists of every possible sort who will emerge from South and conquer the world if they wanted to. And after an indeterminate number of years in whatever location they choose, doing whatever they choose, they'll wind up in professions they either never heard of before or swore they'd never get into. And this mind-boggling 13-year-long step we have, hope, have we taken hopefully gave us some benefit. If we can now read Moby Dick without laughing or consulting Woody Allen's notes on the subject. If we can consider cube roots, exponents, and f of f of x without too much strain. If we can sing or act when they're actually people other than our parents in the audience. And if we could, if we just happen to want to, that is, recite the Gettysburg Address or meaningfully discuss William Jennings Bryan or not pass out. And, or, if we could, just possibly, without coercion, run a lap or two, then we deserve to hold our diplomas high. But this is graduation. It's the time to discuss what has been, not what might have been. We've taken grados, a step. Now we must take another step. I wish my class and its friends and family love and peace in the years to come, and thank you. Much thanks to the student speakers this evening, and, and now we, uh, I want to talk about the next person rather extemporaneously because he's an extemporaneous type person. Uh, I've followed him around a lot of different places in Eugene, and I've gone to the public library and watched him bring his own bottle of water because he wouldn't drink the water that was coming out of the tap. Uh, heard him uh, speak at banquets, uh, the wrestling banquet at the University of Oregon, and for 10 years, we have tried to bring this person to a stage where we were putting on a function of South Eugene uh, activity and effort. And uh, I spoke to uh, Ken this evening and I said, you know, why now and, and why not earlier? And he said, because now is the time. And uh, I understood. <laughs> I asked uh, also of Ken, what's important? It would almost be an insult to mention books and titles and, and movies and things that, that this gentleman has done. And he said, what's important is that I belong to this community. He's homegrown. He grew up in Springfield. He graduated in 1953. And at that time, uh, he was unable to find South and apparently went to Springfield. And, uh, and I, I, I mean that with a, a, a great deal of respect for this gentleman who's been currently married. He just celebrated his uh, 30th wedding anniversary. He said, family's important. That's the gelatin of the society. And it's with this great anticipation that I welcome, and I hope you'll welcome him as well, Eugene Lane County, Oregon's own Ken Kesey.
I'm going to wear my hat for this because it's that special. It'll take me just a second here to shift out of uh, the gears of this community that has been dealt us from the sky. My hay is all lying out there in a terrible state, and I'm in a cranky mood. So it'll have just wait a second till I get my mind on this. Um, my brother and I used to do magic shows right about here where the High Leg Theater used to be. Archie Weinstein was over that way. Dot Dodson's was that way. We did magic shows at the uh, Saturday matinees. And what I'm going to talk about a little bit tonight is magic. I'm going to teach you kids a magic trick before you leave here tonight, and an important one. I just haven't quite figured out how to do it yet. Um, <clears throat> a couple years ago, I was booked in up at a high school in Spokane, and this, this date when I was supposed to go up and talk to this high school was about a month after my youngest son had been killed up there. And they called and said, we can put this off if you want. And I said, no, I want to do it. I just am not sure what I want to do. And <clears throat> so I showed up there, and they said, you've got to be at the high school at 7.30 in the morning. I'd forgotten that there was a 7.30 at that end of the day. I hadn't been up at 7.30 in the morning, I can't, unless I was still up, which I will get working and stay up. But 7.30 came as a real shock. And I delivered the uh, opening address to all the kids at this high school, the same high school that Vision Quest was filmed at up there in Spokane, and, you know, a tight, compact, really working little high school. And I talked to the kids, and I talked to a uh, writing class, and I talked to a poetry class, and by then it was about time for lunch. And I went off with the girl, the woman, who was my guide, for the day, and she's a good-looking uh, English teacher, about 28, 29 years old. She's a Cherokee Indian with long black hair and just snapping black eyes. And I thought maybe, I was worn out, I want to tell you. Uh, I thought we would slip off somewhere and get, uh, you know, a pastrami and a glass of wine or something. No, she had uh, duty down there at the cafeteria. She didn't have a chance to get off anywhere. So I sat there, and I was talking to her, and I was saying, hey, this is a tough job. And she says, tell me about it. She says, tell me how it is to get up every morning and have to prove yourself to those kids over and over again, to have to go against Big Bird and welcome back Cotter and MTV day after day after day. And she said, and to try to teach them stuff that they don't want to learn. They want to call you by their first name your first name. They want to relate to you, and they don't want to learn. They want to have some kind of uh, interpersonal relationship with the teacher or the devil with you. So after listening to her, I addressed the kids at the end of the day, and I started telling them, hey, you kids, pay attention to these teachers. They know more than you do. I know that's hard for you to admit, but they do. And for them to have to get up day after day to confront your energies with just their love is hard. And it's getting harder. It's harder every year to teach some things. Who out there ever read Paradise Lost without having some teacher jam it down their throats? There's a lot of stuff that you're not going to read unless you've got somebody there that cares about it enough to reach down inside your skull and grab you by your brain and say, learn this. It's good for you. And it's hard. And they're being paid damn little and being given very small amount of respect. And yet, these people are taking the most precious thing that we have from the time that they're six years old 
and protecting it. And not only that, they're putting a spark into that thing. I was taught stuff at Springfield High School about myself that I would never be taught again. I was taught that I could call plays from the line. The coach says, come up here. You're the only one who can memorize the plays. You're going to call. You're playing right guard. I know, but you're going to call these plays. We beat everybody except Eugene. <laughs> um, anyway, so as I finished talking to this, uh, these students about this, I had noticed there was one click of students sitting right in the front with one great big old dude leaned back there with his, uh, his big letter out there on his letterman's jacket and all his wrestling stuff hanging over here and this stuff hanging over here. And he said, Mr. Casey, I'm not going on to college. I'm going to work with my dad as a welder. Now, why should I be learning this stuff? What's in it for me to learn this stuff? Now, that's a good damn question. And I took my hat off. And I walked around and I rubbed my bald head and I thought about it for a long time before I finally told him, I don't know. I can't tell you. But I'll tell you this. I'll bet you a thousand dollars that I can teach you a poem this afternoon and 10 years from now you will still remember that poem and you'll come up to me and you'll say thanks for teaching me that poem. I said, now here's the poem. It's written by a guy called Yates, called The Poem of Wandering Angus. It's taught to me 30 years ago by a woman called Mrs. John Young at Springfield High School. I went out to a hazel wood because a fire was in my head. And I cut and peeled a hazel wand and I hooked a berry to a thread. And when white stars were all agleam and moth-like stars were flickering out, I dropped the berry in the stream and caught a little silver trout. When I had laid it on the floor and gone to blow the fire of flame, something rustled on the floor. Something moved and called my name. It had become a glimmering girl with apple blossom in her hair. And she called me by my name and ran and vanished in the brightening air. And though I am old with wandering through hollow lands and hilly lands, I will not rest till I have seen her lips and touched her hands and walked through long green dappled grass and plucked till time and times are done the silver apples of the moon, the golden apples of the sun. And I says, I'll bet you a thousand dollars I can teach you that and you will thank me for it. And he wouldn't bet and I had him. Or the poem had them. The magic of the poem reached out and grabbed hold of these people. And the trick that I'm going to teach you tonight has to do with that. These people that have passed on their various fires to you are passing them on out of love of you and those fires. Now, if you let them go out, then they've wasted a lot of time. It's for you to take that fire and pass it on to other people that will love it the way they loved it. And we are at a time now where we need to know these truths more than ever. We need to know grace and proportion and balance. We need to know beauty and glory that has been taught us and now has a tough time fighting against MTV. And we need to show some appreciation. So the magic trick is this. It's the first law of magic, and that is to be thankful. To say, hey, thanks. So let's have the house lights up, and let's have these teachers stand up. And you folks out there, and you students up here, Let's give these teachers a hand. They're busting their butts for us, folks. Let's give them a hand. Stand up, teachers. Come on. Stand on up.
Thank you, Ken. Someone else uh, strained some anatomy for this group and for this audience this evening, and a gentleman by the name of Ken Kesey. Would you, well, would you professionally thank him for his contribution this evening? You know, I'll probably never have another opportunity to do this, and because this rascal is so crafty, I want to share just one little thing with you. He was a Pac-10 wrestling champion at the University of Oregon, and when he used to wrestle another school up the valley here a few miles, uh, he used to go quack, quack when he would take these wrestlers and when he'd duck underneath. <laughs> is that not correct, Ken? <laughs> not going to admit anything. Before we begin the next uh, part of our program, and perhaps the very most important to those of you that have come to share successes with these young people that are on the platform this evening, I'd like to call to your attention that we have two empty chairs in the, in the uh, front row here, and those are for colleagues and former members of this class who are not uh, with us any longer. And uh, the students have requested and set aside space for Chris Cooper and Joel Hopewell. They understand pain, they understand life, they understand the, what is dealt to us at times and how difficult it is to handle. But this evening, as the students uh, come across the stage, they will indeed remember those who were. At this time, board members, parents, guests, friends, in accordance with the policies of School District 4J, this group of students has fulfilled the requirements for participation in commencement exercises the 17th day of June, 1986. Let the proceedings begin. Don. student, I'd like to mention two members of this class who are in Tulsa, Oklahoma, competing at a national forensics tournament. I'd like to read these names of the first two graduates of the class of 1986 first, John C. Hodges. And Kenneth L. Hodges. Mark Douglas Peterson. Scott Sinclair. Heidi Ann Hyman. Sylvia Lynn McSorley. Allison L. Orr. Donna Lee Morrison. Jesse D. Palmer. Todd Neil Feynman.
Rochelle Lorin Noble. Mariam Jun Pegahi. Trish Michelle Kessler. <laughs> Kathleen Diane Thompson. Bradley Mason McGuire. Derek Wayne Winters. Philip Scott Carter. Vicki Marie Upshaw. Nicole Lynn Christensen. Chanel Powell. June Elizabeth Bowditch. <laughs> Anastasia Zach. <laughs> Jamie Heinz. Gary G. Kip. <laughs> Sherry Candace Vira. <laughs> Max F. Cameron. Mark Todd Harless. Vanessa Lynn Boger. Randy Allen Grimes. Monica Lynn Venice. Matthew Wayne Tiger. Alicia Marie Robinson.
Carmen Marie Borg. Julie Gwen Dector. Mary Best. Keith Carlton Russell. Todd Richard Lichenwalter. Melissa Joe Dooley. <laughs> Na T Nian. Cynthia Louise Dodson. <laughs> Donna Jurel Sundstrom. <laughs> Dean J. Tesler. <laughs> Michael D. Hazen. <laughs> Sheila Diane Hawkins. <laughs> Julie Elizabeth Barnes. Diana Eve Larson. Anastasia Galadriel Machesic. Siobhan Lisa Calhoun. May Lee Quo. <laughs> Wendy Kimie Codera. <laughs> Jonathan Andrew Dyer. Amber Denise Sturdivant. <laughs> Molly M. Dawes. <laughs> Sherry Ann Wood. Carolyn Lene Lowe. Karen Leona Marr. Joanne E. Carthage. Robert L. Dickinson. Sweet, 
Michael Jeffrey Mixus. Curtis F. Colleen. Joseph M. Lyford. Sarah Lynn Hall. Brigitta Christina Marco. Walter J. Hensley. Laura Ann Knutson. Michael Thomas Bates. Carol Jean Davis. Dana Celeste Me. Julia Anna Marie Harvey. Tarek Haj Ali. Aurelio Verdu Valera. Larry Allen Walker. Monty Stephen Thornock. Stephanie Lynn Peel. Mary Elizabeth O'Brien. Sarah Stewart Haller. Shelley Lay Rudolph. <laughs> Leslie Ann Cooper. <laughs> Kimberly Marie Murdoch. Marisa Indra Hill. <laughs> Miriam Mihyun Ru. <laughs> Chad 
Parmenter. Trevor Mills. Jennifer Cara Reed. Sharon Rocket. Gabrielle Francis Morgan. Harris Thurmond. <laughs> Wendy Lynn Pasco. <laughs> Carol Elaine Perrin. Suzanne LaBay. James Clark. Craig Russell Gorman. Andrew J. Rosno. Amy Catherine Brown. Nicole Stolp. Don Y. Germain. Paul Anthony Cogan. Allison Lynn Foster. Bruce Allen Hunter. Daniel Benjamin Tupper. Cassandra T. Merton. Andrea Tomasek. Keith John Kena. Jeffrey D. 
Engel. Eric William Burgreen. Fred R. Swank. Drake S. Coker. Nathan Anthony Reynolds. Elizabeth Jane Folger. Stacy L. Anderson. Joel Christopher Hamley. Paul Michael Swangard. J. Brett Wilson. Curtis Hayes Robinhold. <laughs> Melissa Page Hughes. <laughs> Kristen Alwyn Freeberg. Lionel Clemens. Jonathan Meyer Goldstein. Sandra A. Eppel. Stacy L. Pearson. Ginger Louise Frank. Lynn Ann Likens. Julie Ann Keller. Tina Christine McLeod. Michelle Lee Cheatham. Nicole Morton. Kelly A. Beanie. <laughs> Merzi Sturdivant. <laughs> J. 
Jennifer Lynn Brodhagen. Jamie Lynn Schwab. Hillary Ann Lindbergh. Sarah Kate Kotz. Amy Lee Montgomery. Madeline Richmond Cox. Shannon Elizabeth Gilbert. Kelly Jane Rhodes. Cheryl Lynn Jacob. Christine Marie Vetems. Stephanie Diane Hand. Victoria Lynn Steele. Trevor Douglas Matchin. Elizabeth Marine Ammon. Brent Ballantyne Sudak. Michael Scott McElrath. James Patrick Zirk. Adrian M. Richter. Darren David. Brett Hoagland. Tamara Lynn McKay. Jennifer Lynn Barkman. Heidi Michelle Moore. Moira Jean Bowles. Darby Ann Guar.
Melissa Meyer. Christine Ann Campbell. Aaron Osborne Stahelski. Timothy Doan Arnold. John Scott McLean. Janine P. Chavez. Jennifer C. Wilson. Christine Ann Perry. Darcy Michelle Keeney. Nolan P. Whaley. Cynthia J. Schmidt. Rachel Christine Glassow. Angela Noel Nuri. Evelyn Ewen Ting. Hung No. Andrea Beth Marcello. Gail Marie Riggs. Jason Gustav Cummins. K. Scott Baker. Michelle Amato. Aaron Sullivan. Angela Christine Baker. Nat Schultz. Sarah Ann Smith. Jolinda Jones Seaman. Amy Elise Mercer. Peter Bryce Nosler.
John Lane Langoff. Zachary Calder Hovey. Robert Anthony Mamenta English. Megan Conaher Murphy. Eric Richard Austin. Christopher James York. James Loring Smith. Michael J. Wiswell. Kevin John Arlo Trexel. Clark Allen McCool. Nicholas Dean Johnson. Tanya Alicia Oshatz. Leslie Marie Aird. Shannon Lee Wright. Tamara Lynn Cribs. Theodore Stephen Stark. Joseph D. Wade. Eric Andrew Martin. Colin Bryce Hall. Brian Joseph Addington. Douglas Brian Roberts. Jeffrey William Waller. Jennifer Marion Lee. Nadia Alice Katul. Alan Robert Schmuck. Darren Scott Stringer.
Jeff Yanda Huang. Cody Anderson. Heather McLean Baldwin. Jason Kiter. Don Bates. Ben Eric Jacobson. Kent Arthur Hill. Mitchell Thompson. Stephen A. Mayer. Kelly May Fleming. Tommy Lee Wisniewski. Kenneth Andrew Hooper. William Corby Waters. Wendy Jean Haddock. Karen Lynn Harrison. Heather R. Green. <laughs> Tiffany Diane Yelton. <laughs> James Allen Will. Larry Wayne Sly. Donna Lee Wilson. Eric Davis. Chris Escherich. Brendan. Chill. Don Lundy. Kimberly A. Drewliner. Verna Carter. Oh. 
Janine Elizabeth Emery. Jason David Moss. William Paul Black. Kelly Michelle Rabin. Lana Lenkoff. Michelle Turi Rester. Sandra K. Phillips. Chad Thomas Freibach. Sean Maurice Peterson. Catherine Teresa Kersey. Tracy Shannon Myers. Robert William Keller. Lori Ann Kirk. Amanda Rose Weller. Brad J. Youngert. Sigurd Hovland. Jeffrey David Andrews. Boaz Softji. <laughs> Donald Christopher Ingman. <laughs> Melissa Ann Peely. Marian Alexandra Kuster. <laughs> Hillary Leonard. <laughs> Diana Mora. <laughs> Adam. Clinton Peck. Kirk Linder. Suzanne 
Eileen Cordich. Zara Phoebe Broca. Sandra Annette Cheryl. John Andrew Newell. Rachel Valencia. Sieta Victoria Penn. Karen Raydun Quam. Daniel Philip Reno. Ty Sean. Scott Shaw. Andrew Indica Kim. Patrick Brandon Egan. Adra Rachel Valentine. Brian William Baker. Rosalind Blakely Trotter. Bart Anastasi. Todd L. Tillotson. Brian Thomas Schneiger. Jack Quelo Vincent Subirain Toshi Takizawa Nick Frangle Sean David Elliott Daniel O. Engelhardt James Ashoka Diggs. Maria Bernhard. Bernhard. 
Sylvia Albright. Lynn Hefty. Kristen Voss. Raymond Urig. Sarah Henderson. Meg Berglund. Stacy Pierce. Heidi Hughes. Blake John Besacker. Catherine Ann Reed. Deborah Ronnie. Casera. Aza Otten Van Gelder. Ari Alexander Gilmore. Ruth Wagaki Lachman. Georgia Pebbles Friedman. Glenn Fleischman. James E. Manzak. Jason Barnes. Eric James Wilson. Richard Jeff Clark. Christina Cleric. Stephen Edland. Siamak Hajarazade. William Samovar Gregory. Scott Smith. Frederick 
Gregory Sickler. Katie Sue Courier. Christopher Mark Harvey. William E. Moy. Jeremy Schutz. Kevin Dale Hines. Stephen Miller. Gregor Douglas Mitchell. Wendy Marie Kendrick. Evan Hughes. Dave Martinez. David Koblas. Michael Richard Jeffs. Charmian Logic. Kristen Lee Keister. Terry Ann Swearingen. I think the uh, class of 86 is sending me a message, and we have a, have a uh, few things to do to wrap up here. I would like to introduce the next uh, music number that we have, Friends, and it's from uh, Adra Valentine, who's a soloist, Ryan Baker, piano.